Coming up in today's episode, we'll take a look at high school students that are spreading their knowledge throughout the elementary schools, and we'll get a behind the scenes look into the Oak Ridge Boys. Stay tuned because Laker TV starts now. Hello, and welcome back to Laker TV. Bria, it's nice to have you up here. I know, I'm pretty excited. Well, just don't stutter or, you know, get sick on camera and you'll do fine. Thanks, I guess. I may not be sick, but I think I have a weird case of jet lag from the three-day weekend. I know the feeling. Um, when, when is fall break again? Uh, the first week of October, I think. Thank goodness. But as of now, it is September, and that means students like myself had to take a test. This week in Lakerland, our very own CCHS juniors took the Armed Forces Vocational Aptitude Battery Test, which we refer to as ASVAB. This three-hour test covers things like general sciences, mathematics, coding speed, and even auto mechanics. The point of the nine-part test is to see if you have the mental aptitude to enlist into the military. We hope that all juniors who took the ASVAB did great, even if you don't plan on going to the military after high school. Governor's School for Entrepreneurs, or better known as GSE, is for students in our audience that are creative in the business field. All you have to do is create a video with an original business plan and upload it to YouTube, and one thing leads to another, and there you go. Reporter Kaylee Anderson tells us a few more details on the matter. Well, we just got a report in that there's been some sort of... Governor's School for Entrepreneurs. GSE is a program that is designed for teens who are interested in creating and building ideas. In order to be considered for this program, you must be a current 9th, 10th, or 11th grader. In order to apply, you must complete the online application form, create a two-minute video and upload it to YouTube, and make sure that you have two recommendations. The deadline for the video is January 4th of 2017. If your video is accepted, you will go to the actual program in June. And there, you will have the chance to present your business plan to a panel of judges, and you will be in the running to win some cash. Learning the language can be tough, but it's especially tough when you're in grade school. A few students from Callaway High have taken the time out of their busy day to help the younger generation learn Spanish. This year, Ms. Loveless has developed a new Spanish class, geared to teaching elementary students a few basic Spanish words. We interviewed Miss Loveless and one of her students to give us a little more detail on this subject. This new Spanish class is for students who are at an intermediate level of Spanish or higher. They actually go to the elementary schools and teach the lessons that we plan on Mondays and Tuesdays. We go to Southwest on Wednesdays and we spend an hour with their first and second grades there. And then we go to North on Fridays, and we spend an hour with Miss Rawls' third grade class. Anyone that has taken Spanish 1 and 2 can take this class, and it's a dual credit class also, but you don't have to take it for dual credit. Um, but it's anyone who has, like, a history with Spanish and who would be good with kids. We don't want anyone who doesn't like, not like kids. I think it's great because they can take this class here and not have to spend thousands of dollars at MSU to take the MSU class to get the same idea as the intro to ed. So they're getting to see, hey, do I like elementary school kids or is this something that's not for me? If you'd like to pursue this class or find out more information, please contact Ms. Loveless. You know, Kenan, I'm in Spanish class right now, and I would have loved to learn something because, to be honest, I'm kind of struggling. Well, if you ever feel like you're failing, just do what I do when I'm in pickle. And what's that? Bribe the teacher. I may take that into consideration. Coming up next, our crew at The Current takes a look into the largest adventure game ever made. After that, a student who is up close and personal with a famous band and Bria are probably messing up again. That's right. 
Wait. Stay tuned, Lakers. We'll be right back. Hey, Lakers. It's Kaylee Colson. And Madison McCallum. On this week's <laughs> episode, we're going to take a look at a popular new video game. A game that is large in every aspect hit the shelves only a few weeks ago. And when I say large, I mean large. Large in scope, popularity, and possibility. What can make a game so colossal? All will be revealed as we dive into The Current. No Man's Sky is an action-adventure survival game set in an open universe produced by the independent video game studio Hello Games. An open-world game allows the player to adventure on their own without the confines of a set path or story. However, No Man's Sky is described as an open universe due to the fact that it doesn't just allow you to explore a small world. It allows you to explore a vast expanse of space with over 18 quintillion planets. The game begins as you zoom through the cosmos and take in the vast space around you. The player wakes up on a planet seemingly by themselves, but you are not alone. Your objective is to explore the planet, gather resources to repair your fallen ship, explore other worlds, and interact with a strange red orb called an Atlas Fragment. This begins your adventure in the infinite world of No Man's Sky. There are infinite paths to take within the universe as you create your own story. Its next level exploration makes No Man's Sky a game that is truly out of this world. It's time to go into hyperdrive and fly out of here. See you next time on The, the Current. Current. One of our fellow students here at Callaway County got a special opportunity this summer to take part in a concert at the Kentucky State Fair. He was on stage, just not performing. Bradley Smith gives us a closer look. You might remember their song, Bobby Sue. They have a little drum solo at the beginning of Bobby Sue where these lights come on the drums and flash in different colors. That's cool. Callaway County sophomore Jordan Lax was given the opportunity to operate lights with classic country band the Oak Ridge Boys. For those of you who don't know, the Oak Ridge Boys is a country band from the 70s and 80s with hits such as Elvira, Bobby Sue, and American Made. Jordan used social media to come into contact with one of the band's members. Five years ago, I started talking to Dwayne Allen, who is one of them on Facebook, and um, I would ask him a question and he would answer the question and we kept going back and forth and um, eventually I said I hope I can meet you sometime and he said if you can tell me when you're coming to one of our shows just let me know and I'll make that happen. Jordan says there was many interesting parts about that day but he recalls one more than others. But it was also very interesting to be on stage looking out because it wasn't the first time at the Kentucky State Fair I'd seen them. Normally I was in the crowd looking up at the stage and this time I was up on the stage looking out and that was very interesting. But just seeing how it all got put together and I was on stage with these slides that I'd watched over the years and it was like they were right there in front of me. They were unloading when I first got there off their bus and everything, the trailer, and um, th I helped set up the lights and put brackets on lights and stuff like that and worked pretty much constantly all day. I never really thought of how much went into before the concert because when you're at a concert, you're watching the concert, you, you don't really think about what happens before it, you just see what's there. After taking part in this, Jordan thinks that this is something he could do for his career. One of their shows I started noticing the lighting and I got really into the lighting and the lighting director and I kind of decided that's where I wanted to go as a career. It's finally Friday and nothing says Friday like cheering on the football team. Um, I say, I can't say I know what that feels like. Oh, yes, you can. I saw you in the Rock Pad crowd at the Murray game. Tonight, the football team is playing Marshall County at Marshall. Kickoff is at 7, so be there if you can. Yeah, even though the game is on the road, Marshall's only like 25 minutes away, and for most of you, it's right in your backyard. Hope to see you all there, and as the show coming to the end, is coming to an end, we would like to take time to remember the anniversary of the day that changed everything here in the United States. This Sunday will mark the 15th anniversary of the September 11th terrorism attack on America. If you're a student, you may not have even been born yet in 2001, let alone even remember the event. But I'm sure our teachers and administrators remember it all too well. Here is the memories from that day.
Well, we just got a report in that there's been some sort of explosion at the World Trade Center in New York City. Terrorism back then was a little new, I guess, to be here on our American soil. So we were all fearful of what, what was next. You know, we weren't sure who did it. And uh, we saw the devastation of the, of the buildings coming down. And, and I remember thinking, you know, if it can happen there, then where are we safe? So it was a, a feeling of uneasiness, I guess, in the days that followed, trying to figure out who did it and why they did it. And, uh, you know, I remember thinking, what, what have we done for someone to hate uh, what we stand for that much? I just remember it being kind of a unifying time in this country as well. You know, it was a time where, regardless of our differences, we all rallied around being Americans at that time. And so that was maybe, I think, kind of a silver lining in all of that. But this is the shot again. This is moments ago of this, of this second plane coming in. And this is now in slow motion. Oh, this is terrifying. Um, I think that as Americans, we still struggle um, with how to deal with terrorism, um, to deal with domestic terrorism and international terrorism, um, while still maintaining the ideals of Americanism um, that we want to allow freedoms for everybody. And I think that as a nation, we're, we're still struggling with how do we, how do we keep that fine line between um, making sure that our nation is free, um, but also protecting our nation. And I'm not sure that there's an easy answer to that. It's Don Dealer down here, I'm four blocks north of the World Trade Center. The second building that was hit by the plane has just completely collapsed. The entire building has just collapsed as if a demolition team set off. When you see the old demolitions of these old buildings, it's folded down on itself and it is not there anymore.